An old friend sent me a very nice gift yesterday. She sent it from the UK actually. And when we were on the phone, um, she reminded me of a valuable lesson I taught her about money when she was back in Nigeria. This was some five years ago. So it turned out that she ran into a case, a serious case. And the, the opponent or the other people involved took her to the police, which means they were preparing to charge her to court. You know, and um, it was 50-50. So she wanted to go to court to defend herself, but again, her lawyers and stuff advised her that since it's 50-50, you might go there and lose the case and you end up in jail, you know? Um, the other option alternative was to settle out of court. And the money these guys were demanding was huge. So, and they were not backing down after a certain point. And uh, this is equivalent to the money she, she has already saved. She wanted to use it to relocate abroad. So eventually she took the part of uh, settling out of court and she paid them and the case was resolved and everything. But what I noticed was then she went into depression. You know, imagine working hard two, three, four years, saving everything. And then just when you are close to using that money to relocate, something happened that took away the whole money. And the people that took it didn't really deserve it. They were just being antagonistic, you know. They just wanted to punish her, you know. She was into depression, you know. She couldn't eat, she couldn't drink, she couldn't go to work, and it was crazy. So, when she confided in me, I told her that, look, money is a property. It's a property we acquire, just like every other thing. Don't be too attached to money. That is the first spiritual step you can take. Once you detach from material possessions, it doesn't mean you should not pursue money. It doesn't mean you should not uh, make money. But don't be too attached to it. Do you understand that money is just like clothes? Would you end your life? Would you go into depression if you lo lose this clothes? No. Because what? You know that tomorrow you can get another clothes. What of your car? What of your shoe? What of your wristwatch? Do you understand? There are many things you can comfortably do, but you will never go into depression. Why? Because you know you can acquire, acquire them after losing them. That is the same way with money. No matter how much money you lose in sports bets, the other day I saw a guy on the floor at the sports bet and he was screaming that he has lost everything. He has lost everything. No, that's a carnal man. Do you understand? As a, as a man of the spirit, if I put it in quote, a man who has gained a certain enlightenment, there is no loss that will move you. Do you understand? There is really no loss that will move you. Because you know that tomorrow you can repossess it, you can acquire it. You shouldn't attach your happiness to material possessions because they come and go. They are part of the journey. They are not you. It's only when you make that possession you when you when you think that you are that position that when you lose it you feel like you want to end your life even dating like sometimes you can like so much somebody so much that you forget yourself then you start thinking that that person you are liking is you so when you lose that person you feel that you are now empty you go and end it all no nah. no matter how much you love you still need to know that this journey is yours the journey of life is yours don't make money your master it's okay if you have a lot of money, but it's also okay if you don't have a lot of money. It's okay if you lose your house. It's okay. Do you understand? It's a journey. Enjoy the journey. Enjoy the journey. You know, that time I told this lady that the reason why we make money is so that we can get what we want. But the second reason most people don't know is so that we can take ourselves out of trouble when we fall into trouble. It doesn't matter how much it costs you. If you get into trouble, your money should be able to help you get out of it. That's why you're making the money. You shouldn't be feeling bad because you lost a lot. For instance, let's say you have a child tomorrow and the child has a hole in their heart and they needed money for the surgery and it's going to cost all the money in your account plus some extra you have to borrow. Does it mean you will feel bad for doing that? No. If you spend money to rescue yourself from a problem, you should be happy. That is the purpose of the money. You can't eat the papers, can you? You can't eat the, the numbers, can you? 
the numbers on the screen that says you have this amount of money, you can't eat it. The reason the numbers are there to remind you that you can take out from this and rescue yourself from issues. You can take out from that and get yourself the things you want. You can take out from that and solve your needs. Do you understand? So don't be too attached to the numbers on the screen. Such that if you lose it, you will lose yourself. That is the meaning of that quote. What shall it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? If in the process of gaining a property, you forget yourself. That you are the one acquiring the property, not the property acquiring you. You get. So I had an aunt uh, when I was younger. This aunt was pregnant and she was always scared. She was always scared. So as the date of the delivery was approaching, the more fear in her body. So I was discussing with her one day. I told her, look, remember that you are the one that is pregnant. It's not pregnant that is you. Do you understand? <laughs> Whatever is going to happen there in that theater when you get there, your fear is just going to make it worse. You should go there knowing that you are the one that is pregnant and if it's time to push out the baby, you know that you, you are the one that is pushing out the baby, not the, <laughs> not the baby pushing you. So that's the same thing with when you acquire properties. It's good to acquire properties, but don't let the loss of it destroy you. There are many people that when they had a divorce, their life was totally destroyed. But then you, when you see how other people handle divorces, you will see that it's a matter of mentality. You know, we've had people like Elon Musk lose their first wife and boom, they have 12 children, one, one, two, two with different women. That's his own concept of post-divorce trauma. We have Nick Cannon doing the same thing. We have women like uh, Kim Kardashian's mom suffered the first divorce. What did she do? She remarried. Second divorce, what did she do? She remarried again. You know? Because she knows that it's a journey. Okay, there is a first failure. You pick yourself up and move. You know? And normally when you experience failure, your mind is going to mess you up. When you experience loss of acquired properties, your mind is going to mess you up for months or weeks. It's trauma. Your mind will keep replaying that in its trauma. There was a, a, a friend, an old friend of mine, that failed his um, medical school exam twice. By the second one, he ended it all. This guy ended it all. Like, seriously? Because at the point, he's starting to think that medicine is him. No, medicine is just a degree he wants to acquire. It's different from his life journey. I still have friends who went into school to study medicine, somewhere in between, left the whole discipline and went into some sort of business or the other and they are doing better than medical doctors <laughs> do you understand it's a problem of knowing that you are different from what is happening to you there was a time i can tell you right there was a time that i had an injury i was i was younger uh my early 20s i had an injury i was walking in the market and i missed my step so i dislocated my ankle my bone was popping out that like I could not walk. So I had, they had to call bike to take me to the hospital. And when we got there and doctor saw it and was like, wow, what is happening? Like they now got, um, they inject, they gave me some injections and they tried to bandage the legs. So as they were fixing the bone and bandaging the legs, I did not respond to any pain. So the doctor was like, because they wanted to give me a painkiller before that. I said, no, don't give me. The doctor was like, uh, while they were doing it, the nurses were bandaging it, the doctor there was like, how come, is it not painful? Like, you're not showing pain. I said, I'm, I told her, I'm different from the pain. Okay, when the leg is paining me, but I choose how to react, and I've choose not to react. They have to bandage, push the bone back in, bandage it. You know, my skin did not tear, it just pushed, you, could, you can see that my bone came out of the, my bone pushed the skin out. So they put it back in, bandage it. It was painful as hell, but I've learned over time to decide which of my emotions to show. So I was just there calm. Do you know when they checked my blood pressure? The lower one was 110. <laughs> like my blood pressure was so high to tell you the intense pain, but I was calm as hell because what i learned to show the one so what is happening to you is different from how you express it i'm not saying you should not express but just know that it's things part of the journey not you you are the traveler so don't let the loss of money 
or material possessions translate to the loss of your life or joy.